Epping High Street, the launch pad for many a great walk. And let's hope uh, that's the case today. First things first though, I've got to find the footpath that leads us away from Epping towards our destination, which I'll tell you about in a minute. I think it's just to the left of the War Memorial up there. It's 31 or 32 degrees today and me being me, I'm setting off in the hottest part of the day. It's about, it's after two o'clock, I guess it must be nearly half two now. And we're going to walk from here, Epping, out to Sawbridgeworth or in the direction of Sawbridgeworth. I think we'll probably actually finish around uh, at Harlow Mill Station, I think. But the, the route I planned about six years ago, I was coming out here quite a bit to walk the field paths north of Epping. And I thought I plotted a walk from here to Sawbridgeworth and that's what I'm doing today. So it should be amazing. It should be, I mean, I'm saying expectations, but I'm, I'm excited about this. And also the weather, my God, it's just so beautiful. So we actually go just to the right of the War Memorial, further up the High Street, and the path should be on our left. I've taken this path before, but so hopefully it will come back to me. Here's a little um, chunk of Epping Forest, a triangle of Epping Forest, which is cut off from the rest of the forest by Epping Town. And it often gets overlooked when people talk about walking in Epping Forest, but it's, uh, it's a really wonderful little area. I walked through here one New Year's Eve when it was all crisp and frozen and white and full of deer. So here is the public footpath that leads us towards Thornwood and Thornwood Common. Ah yes, I remember this path here. Fantastic. Coming out here today really links me back to a period of time sort of between 2016 and 2018 when I was really intent on exploring all of this area around the edge of London, around the eastern fringe of London and pushing out beyond the boundaries of Epping Forest north towards Roydern and Hartford and Ware and towards Harlow. But there was a whole section here between, well, this first part of the footpath I did, but then I went towards the centre of Harlow to the east of Harlow that I didn't explore and I never really came back to it. My preoccupations moved elsewhere. So it's always been on the list. So today we're going to cover some of that territory, not all of it. I stupidly haven't got a part of the map which goes further out east, but I don't know if I've got time to do that today. So that's great. That means there'll still be another bit to add on. But who knows? <laughs> you never know in my walks, do you? And I so love, I so love these last days of summer. It's the 9th of September today, and you never know when each nice day is going to be the last for, you know, six, seven months. You can see where the, uh, where the fence has just collapsed. This, this is now redundant. <laughs> just walk around it. I'll check the footage, but I think the last time I walked across this path here was around, uh, it was in August, it was quite late August. So only like it would have been a few weeks prior to where I'm walking today, but I'm pretty sure that this field hadn't been uh, harvested, that the crops were still, were still tall stems of wheat or corn or barley, whatever it was. I think I have to walk right through that tractor dust. See how kind of parched the ground is here. It's so dry. We've got a real burst of beautiful hot weather. But look, this is like Tuscany.
beautiful fields here and hedgerows. This is London's countryside. This really is just the extension of, of the city of London, of the urban growth, the urban sprawl. And this is where it merges into the countryside. And it's a sobering thought to consider they were going to run the central line across the fields here, branching off from Epping all the way to Harlow. So I need to stay to the east of that water tower you can see there in the distance. And I did this walk or walked in this direction oh, seven years ago, six years ago. That's where I ended up, but I want to go a different route. My word. It is really hot. <laughs> I thought there'd be more shade out here than there, than there is walking across the fields. I think it might, well actually no, it might not get any different. <laughs> I'm right out exposed in the sun. My water's become really warm. Yeah, it's interesting, like earlier in the summer, I read a fantastic book by one of my favorite YouTubers, a guy called John Zahorian, who did, uh, who, I think he plotted his own route around Death Valley, the Death Valley Loop. And you've read this wonderful little book about it. It's one of my favourite walking books of all time. I highly recommend it. Go to John's YouTube channel and you can order it from there. I'm not saying this is like Death Valley, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's all relative, right? Now, I would have thought the path went to the right here. It's all good anyway. I can just walk around the edge of Harlow, which isn't that far away, really. Oh no, look on the next gatepost. The public footpath is going the way I anticipate. So maybe my map reading isn't as tragic as I thought. That's Thornwood, Thornwood Common over there. That's an interesting looking plan. I think it's an old jet. What I love about the detail of the Ordnance Survey maps is this little pond here is marked on the maps. It must be a little uh, spring-fed pond. And there's another one at the other end of the field, I think. Seeing what I'm pretty sure was an old jet, like a little sort of 1950s jet plane, I think, is a real reminder of the role this area played during the Second World War. And we saw the signs for North World Airdrome Airfield, which was a really important fighter station during the Second World War. But there were a number of them in the fields all around London. I mean, probably all around southern England, but certainly all around London, because obviously London was a major target for German bombers. And there was a big airfield at Sawbridgeworth, where I'm not sure if we'll get to Sawbridgeworth, but there was RAF Sawbridgeworth, which was a big fighter station. And I think they had some of those um, early jet fighters. Was it a meteor fighter, the American ones? I recount a story in my book of one that crashed in the woods near where I think that was flying out of Sawbridgeworth. You can kind of imagine the scene, can't you, in those wartime summers of the pilots being scrambled to their planes to go up into the clear blue skies and possibly make their last flight. I'm getting quite strong memories now of the of the walk I did six or seven years ago. I remember this little diagonal path here. The path is marked with borage, which is great, but the problem is the borage is full of bees. So I don't particularly want to walk through a whole load of bees, disturbing the bees. They've got very important work to do, the bees gathering all that nectar. 
making honey, pollinating plants. Trying to remember the story about these tracks here. Now I will recount <laughs> uh, the variations running through my head. One is that very simple one. The, one of these was the, going to be the root of the tube line that linked Epping to Harlow. And another one is, is that something to do with um, road signs that were put here to confuse any invading German army and that they were here, maybe they were here when I came or maybe they created a misleading road to lead them into the wrong place. Something to do with wartime shenanigans anyway. And I think the third thing was one of them follows the route of a Roman road through to the Roman villa at Harlow. Of course, all of those things <laughs> could be true and they could all be wrong. But, you know, some of it relates to some of the roads around this area. I got that from a gentleman I bumped into here at the end of this road and he was walking his dog along here, a local man. I think he might even be the farmer at Orchard Farm, in fact. So the footpath goes here somewhere, it doesn't, I'm not sure it does go through the orchard, I have a feeling. And it goes around the edge here. Let's see. Now, I do remember coming out through here, across a little brook that has been running around the edge of the fields, although it seems pretty dry. And I come into this field, yeah. And I think we go straight up here, and then we want to veer off to the right. From a distance, this didn't look particularly promising, but you can see that they've left it open here for walkers to pass through, which is nice. So that is the public footpath, which is great. Wow, hot. Yeah, we now have a, just a short section of road walking and then I branch off towards, I think, Latin Common. So the footpath is somewhere here near the next farm and we're heading in that direction. This is where I leave the route. Well, actually, at this point, I'm on a different route to the one I took six or seven years ago. So here we go. It's the Thornwood Country Walk. And uh, straight away, there is a significant obstacle across the path. <laughs> I am going to have to crawl under there on the ground, watching out for uh, things like broken vodka bottles. But on the other side, it looks all right. That wasn't actually too bad and there was only that one bit of broken glass let's hope the rest of the path is all right and we are to the east of the water tower which to me feels like an enormous success. That water tower is on the edge of Harlow, one of the villages anyway, on the edge of Harlow. And I was heading the direction where I'm going now when I did that walk and I went over there, but I went wrong near Orchard Farm. So the fact I'm here feels like a big success, even if it all goes pear-shaped after this. So here we have choices. I think we're gonna take the path that basically carries on, but to the right, we have the Stort Valley Way and the walk I did along the, the River Stort navigation is one of my all-time favourite walks. But I think that's going into bigger loop. I think we're going to head in a more direct route towards Harlow. It's funny the way the landscape plays tricks on the memory, because actually I think I did come this way and I turned left there towards the water tower. And there's a moat in the undergrowth over there on the far side of this field. And I... I think I briefly considered going up that way there. And actually, I've realized the route I wanted to take is along the Stort Valley Way here, in this direction here towards the site of 
Latin priory, a medieval Augustinian priory that was down there. It's funny because there's the walk and then there's the memory of the walk. And I remember this walk vividly. It's one of those walks that really stuck in the mind. As I remember sitting beneath the trees down there and they were being rattled by the wind. And I could sense the idea that the, the autumn winds were coming to shake the dead leaves from the trees. This is why I think it's great to recross old paths, re-encounter old memories of yourself, walk over your own ghost. So somehow at this time, my mic seems to have stopped working for a short period. Don't worry, it's coming back any minute soon. But um, basically what happened was that I decided to take a detour to go and look at uh, the site of Latin Priory. Uh, so I had to go through a farmyard to get a peek at the buildings. And the, the, the Priory was actually founded in 1292 um, and then was rebuilt in the 14th century and then abandoned um, just before the dissolution of the monasteries. Um, in the 1530s or 1550s or whatever middle of the 16th century um, but so that it does seem like the buildings the priory buildings are related to the, at least the 16th century priory if not the 14th century or bits of the bit from the 13th century so that was kind of amazing and then checking my footage from the walk I did in 2016 I'd actually walked up in the other direction hence it was a little bit familiar but I couldn't work out how it fitted into that walk so it was it was a really beautiful sort of um, diversion let's crack on in this direction towards Latin Common I think it is or we got a choice actually either we go to Latin Common or we cut across the park which I think is through the wood there but it's all good basically <laughs> this is beautiful this is often the best time of the day when you do a summer walk the last couple of hours when the sun's not quite as harsh and you walk into the sunset and i will enjoy a cold pint at the end of this <laughs> or perhaps two really lovely to be going through a little corner of woodland here. It's a great view over the edge of Harlow here. Harlow New Town. And this path through the wood here has the look of an old, old way, perhaps linking medieval Harlow to Latin Priory perhaps. Imagine the, uh, the monks shuffling along here. Look at these dead straight pine trees here in the middle of the wood. Quite a strange experience to emerge from that wood. And there are houses here. We've obviously hit the edge of Harlow and I think this is Latin bush, which is great. Wow, something magical about it. And Harlow Newtown was the work of the great architect Frederick Gibbard. And we were down in Crisp Street Market just last week, in fact, last Saturday, a week ago, which was also designed by Gibbard and the Lansbury Estate as well. So we've done the back-to-back Frederick Gibbard walks, you could say. I've never actually seen Harlow in the daylight. When I did the walk before, I arrived here in the evening and it was dark when I hit the edge of town. The idea of this walk is to skirt the, uh, go around the outskirts of Harlow, but who knows? What I do know is that this is heavenly here. What a gorgeous spot. I don't know if this walk will survive the first encounter with a pub. <laughs> it's so hot, I'm starting to feel it a bit now because um, my water is like the temperature of you know warm tea basically very tepid well beyond tepid warm hot um, so I need a cold drink 
And there's a pub up here. It's going to be tempting. So I think uh, the new destination is Harlow Mill Station, which is also on the edge of Harlow and uh, it takes us through Old Harlow. It's about half the distance than it is to Sawbridgeworth, so still good, sort of three miles to walk, two and a half, three miles that way, basically. I think the original idea for Harlow Newtown was it was a place for Londoners to move to to escape the kind of war-torn, bombed-out London, inner-city London, people moving from places like Islington and Hackney and Dalston, the Summers Town, that kind of part of London, which was in bad shape after the war. And it's still a, a place for Londoners to move out to. Harlow is still growing. It's one of the major centres of uh, house building, I think. And this is a great track running behind the houses here, a cycle path. I think I'd have been disappointed if there wasn't at least one underpass on this section of the walk. That was an interesting crossing coming off that mini roundabout there because you just have to take your life in your hands and just run because look, when the cars come around there you've got no idea whether they're going to turn up this road or just carry straight on so you just have to kind of run and hope. Anyway, up alongside this busy road now. When you get to this stage of a walk as soon as you see the station on the map and you're heading in that direction and that's your goal and you're a bit tired and you're thinking about having a drink at the end at this point any drink <laughs> you know you kind of just want to get there and you kind of then now you're just picking the quickest route rather than thinking oh well, maybe i could take an interesting detour particularly if the route is like this But these are all the things that make a walk really special and really memorable. It's this part of the walk that I'll probably remember in six or seven years' time. And straight away after I say that, I decide to take a bit of a detour down here. It's not, it doesn't add that much on and it's a nicer route, I think. I was thinking there's something vaguely Black Mirror-esque about this building here and then I noticed on the board here one of the companies based at the Cowell Park Harlow on the edge of Harlow is Raytheon Technologies who are a major arms manufacturer. I think they make a lot of missiles. It's interesting the way the heat saps your energy isn't it? Like I've walked just over eight miles which isn't an enormous distance but I feel, abs <laughs> I feel absolutely shattered and I can't wait to sit down and have a cold drink. Yeah so the heat just really <laughs> it just really drains all your energy. Yeah, another mini roundabout. I'm not sure how many there is now on this walk around Harlow. It's about the eighth, I think. Is Harlow famous for its mini roundabouts? I think it might be, mightn't it? I know my American viewers are possibly slightly confused by these odd things that we have at junctions. Anyway, the significance of this mini roundabout is, is it's the last one before a pub. So this is now Harlow Old Town. People sometimes forget that there was a town here before Harlow New Town was built. There's actually even burial mounds here and Roman remains, a Roman villa. So it's just, you know, it's a place of antiquity. And that's Harlow Old Town High Street. Lovely old timber framed building here on the street where I think there's the pub that I'm going to go to. The Crown is down there somewhere. Just take a quick look at the high street first. Lovely smell of charcoal smoke from the kebab shop. Harlow is known for its sculptures. There is a sculpture trail you can do around Harlow. And here is one here. It's called Core by Betty Ray in 19... 
I'll put the date actually, 1953 or 1963. Lovely old timber building. And I'm hoping that's going to be my pub. This has got to be the most eagerly anticipated pint I've had for quite some time. That beer was almost biblical in what it meant to me. But now we're at Harlow Mill Station and the journey back to London. I've got about 15 minutes for the train back to London. Could have done with a can for the journey really, but there you go, such is life. <laughs> Two pints in the crown were just restorative, really just brought me back to life, like pouring something onto something that was dried up and bringing it back to life whatever the analogy there is. But anyway, um, thank you so much for joining me on that walk. What a golden walk it was. It was an amazing experience for me to partly retrace old steps and then partly discover new ground and new land and finally see Harlow Newtown. Obviously, we've got to go back to Harlow and do the sculpture trail and all that business and do a proper Harlow walk. But um, yeah, I'm so glad I did that walk today. Really lovely. Well, maybe it's not the end of the summer. It could be the end of the summer. Maybe it's not the end of the summer. That's what I always like to say. I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. By the way, I've just ordered the first printed proof copy of my book. If that is good, if I'm happy with that, the book will be in production. Mm -hmm.